treatment at different stages. And uh, before we dwell on to a treatment at uh, six to nine years of age, because uh, an overview is important to understand. Uh, <clears throat> you see, if you, if you are able to diagnose your condition and you suspect the hip joint to be dysplastic between, uh, at the time of birth, then for first six months, you must be able to put the child in a harness. And one of the most typical harness is pelvic harness. And you continue that and then you reassess a child at six months of age and you continue the harness. And uh, before the child starts walking and um, after that you can uh, have the harness during the, uh, during the night period only. Then you can give up the harness. If you get the child between 6 months to let's say 18 months of age or 24 months of age up to 2 years of age then do a close reduction and um, do a close reduction and put the child in a hip spike arm. and so you close reduction and hip spike and if you child get a child who's who's not been diagnosed and you diagnose him at the age of 24 months that means 2 years onward up to the age of five six years then you will require close reduction but at times you may be successful in close reduction if the hip is hip is not completely dislocated and you may put the child in a close reduction and you find that oh hip gets concentrically reduced and put him in a hip spiker and then later on three months and then you find how stable it is and put him in an abduction plane. But difficult, the children do not, you know, like to have abduction plane at that age. So it's difficult. But then you will have to continue the treatment at least for a period of six months in these children. And after that, you can leave them free. But if you uh, get a situation where it is completely dislocated, then you have to do an open reduction. You do an open reduction and for covering the outer part, of the head of the stablum. Uh, if you find that you know the head of the stablum uh, remains uh, one third laterally out, then you'd have to do a, a osteotomy to contain it. So what you normally is done is Salter's innominate osteotomy, and uh, uh, <clears throat> and then you give a hip spike and you continue it for a period of six months in between, and then you will leave the child free. So if a child is now coming to you at six years of age, then by this time, the, the, the greater trochanter has migrated uh, considerably proximally. So uh, it requires no doubt a open reduction. But then open reduction in these situations because all the tissues are contracted, so it becomes a very tight open reduction. So you need to do a femoral shortening. A femoral shortening should be done and uh, a it is to be a open reduction and then a hip spike. This is how we treat these patients. Uh, so sir beautifully explained uh, at what different ages the our treatment plan would be but treat, uh, aim would be to give a painless mobile and stable hip in the end we hope to get a painless and mobile hip which is stable in these patients however um, at that age if the child has been uh, diagnosed at the age of six years and we are doing this procedure, you have to keep in mind that these children may either develop a parthoid hip and, and later on in life, they develop secondary changes. So they may be prone to get early osteoarthrosis of the hip joint. So then the parents have to be warned about it that these are the children which have a predilection for a later secondary osteoarthrosis. In the, at times, these children may also get avascular necrosis. So that is why you have to be careful while doing this surgery 
Do not give a very tight hip. One has to do a femoral shortening so that we minimize the chances of these patients getting a uh, avascular necrosis. So, sir, said that you have to talk to the uh, parents and explain them that even though you are surgically reducing the hip, but these children would be at a higher risk of developing secondary complication like osteoarthritis or uh, avascular necrosis of hip later on in life. So that has to be explained to the patient. Uh, no, avascular necrosis can be uh, will possibly develop early. Okay. Uh, this could be an uh, this could be an early complication. But in those situations, because the child femoral head is still developing, so you have contained the head into the stabulum, right? And you have not you have you have tried you have not done anything wrong to the posterior part of the capsule. So you hope that these will revascularize. So uh, they need some protection in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they may just end up with perthoid hip, perthoid like changes, perthes like changes in these hip joints. And these are the those are the hip joints which will possibly go for a early early uh, secondary osteoarthritis at a later Lateral stage. stage. Okay. So parents need to be fully informed mm. whenever these procedures are done that these patients need to be uh, uh, need to be in follow up. Regular follow up. Regular follow up till the hip gets matured okay. and later also in life. Okay. So regular follow up. So talk to, talking to the parents is very important. So they know what is to be expected later on. Immediate and later uh, delayed complications need to be talked to the uh, parents and the patient. Uh, so, sir has already talked about how will we tra plan our treatment. To, so, age a, age of presentation is an important uh, criteria on which we decide how do we treat. So, less than two years, we can do closed reduction. After two years, most probably we'll be requiring an open reduction and uh, plus minus uh, uh, Salter's osteotomy and yeah. uh, femoral osteotomy also uh, in the higher age group patients. Yeah. In, in age group which is beyond five to six years. So that's the age group where you definitely require a femoral shortening. So, so uh, indications of open reduction, what are the open? So failure of closed reduction and or is there an age for uh, or is there an indication of primary open reduction? Oh, if you are not able to reduce it close, mm -hmm. then obviously you will have to do an open reduction even at an early age. Because open the whole concept is to contain the head back into the stabulum because otherwise the stabulum will not develop. And you see the formation of these two take place being in opposition with each other. So until less they are in opposition with each other, the function will not determine the form. So function determines the form as they are put in a position with each other. So that is a basic biological principle. 